These are the times when chefs messed up real bad on Hell's Kitchen. And what happened with sous chef Andy was tragic. I'm talking about the very skilled Andy Van Willigan, who was the sous chef of the Red Team from season 7 to 14. And, well, she was here to celebrate her wedding reception. Please welcome the bride and the groom, Mr. Bryce and Andy Katzbeck. Chef Ramsay, of course, was well aware that this was going to be a risky move. But since they were already down to 11 contestants, he expected things to go pretty smoothly. However, both teams join hands to ruin the entire service. Terrible start. Five minutes. Fire. The top table's on trace. Well, in the beginning, everything started off with a bang with both the wedding party and contestants being equally excited. The menu featured challenge-winning dishes, and since the main table was shared by both teams, they had to send out their food at the same time. Unfortunately though, nothing went according to plan since mistakes started to pile up one after another. And it's crazy how both teams start to screw up only moments after the whole thing began. In the red team, Jackie Fuchs ended up burning the garlic for the risotto. And to make matters even worse, after Ashley Nichol pointed this out, Jackie continued to cook unbothered. It was only after sous chef Christina forced her to refire it that Jackie finally tossed the burnt ones out. Well, she wasn't too happy about it, but does that even matter? Really? You're gonna tell Chef Christina? What the f Ashley? I mean, Jackie should have known better. Like, how could you serve something that wouldn't only smell, but also taste like it was burnt? Frustrated, she got back to working on the refire, and when she finally sent the risotto to the pass, she only sent half of it up. Chef First table, two risotto, got one and a half portions. What was she up to? Was she doing this on purpose or something? Meanwhile, in the blue kitchen, it was Chad Gelso and Joe Ritchie's turn to screw things up. While Chad sent overcooked scallops out, Joe sent risotto that lacked herbs. No herbs. Herbs. Gotcha, sorry. At this point, I think sous chef Andy was already contemplating her decision to bring the celebration over to Hell's Kitchen. Wow. No, they but again, I think she expected that something would go wrong anyway because she'd already been the sous chef six times. If the poor start by both teams wasn't enough, 45 minutes into the service, things came to an abrupt halt. Chef Ramsay found Danny using a regular pan for cooking the scallops. Danny, yes, chef. are you using a non-stick pan? No, I'm not using a non-stick pan. Like, come on. Everybody knows that you have to use a non-stick pan to cook scallops. What's more, Danny had years of experience under her belt. Things got even worse when she gave her reason for using the pants. I went through all of them, chef. I didn't want to stay here do nothing, chef. And it was right there in front of her eyes. Chef Ramsay was disappointed in her, and just as you'd expect, soon enough, the scallops started to stick to the pan. Chef Ramsay had enough of her crap and decided to take matters into his own hands. There's a reason why we put these in a non-stick pan. Does anyone know why? So they don't stick to the pan. I could totally understand his frustration. That was meant for sous chef Andy's table. I mean, how long should he wait to get one perfectly cooked batch of scallops for the newlyweds? At this point, Ramsay was hoping that at least one dish would turn out to be good. The entire appetizer round was disappointing, but the entrees turned out to be far worse. Both teams started on their orders, but when Hassan Musulmani and Jared Bobkin brought their chicken to the pass, it turned out to be raw. So, how do you think Chef Ramsay reacted? Well, of course, he was pissed. This is not happening. There wasn't a moment that went by with Ramsay not being frustrated or pissed with both teams throughout the entire service. As Hassan and Jared got back to work, Jared was able to get his refire accepted, but Hassan wasn't ready yet. However, Chef Ramsay couldn't wait any longer, and he was forced to send the blue team's order out. Poor Andy's parents never received their orders, and things got so bad that some of the other diners had to share their food with them. Seriously, you think the mother of the bride could get some food around here? Well, thankfully, Chef Ramsay sent the food out and didn't actually have to wait. Because, well, when Hassan sent his chicken to the pass for the second time, it was raw once again. At this point, the famous chef was infuriated. Hassan immediately dashed towards the station to start working on his third attempt, which is when the entire red team pulled in to get the job done. And finally, it was accepted. As both teams were working on their last ticket, the service was coming to an end. And just when Chef Ramsay thought that things would end on a good note, Chad destroyed his plans when he sent raw salmon to the pass. Hey, hey, hey. You're cooking the easiest entree. Regardless of their awful performance, the service was successfully wrapped up. But not without Chef Ramsay's complete embarrassment. Following this awful dinner service, both teams were named joint losers, which isn't surprising at all. 
However, Chef Ramsay left everyone shocked when he eliminated a contestant that nobody expected would leave so soon. Awesome. That's it, one bad night and he was sent home packing. After the episode aired, several viewers believed that Hassan's elimination was pretty unfair. Now, according to this specific viewer, they claimed that Danny should have been the one to leave that night. Let's not forget about Jackie too, who dodged the bullets on so many occasions. Well, I get that sending Rochik into the past like Hassan did is unacceptable, but both Jackie and Danny were far worse. Speaking in Hassan's defense, another Reddit user said that Hassan's elimination may not be a robbery, but it was definitely the wrong call. If you ask me, I think that this was definitely Hassan's worst performance, but given the chance, he would have bounced back right away. Knowing how things could get really unpredictable at Hell's Kitchen, I don't know why anyone would like to host our quinceanera night in this kind of heated environment. And well, that's exactly what happened in the 10th episode of season 11, where the night was supposed to be all about celebration, but it turned out to be a damn nightmare. Plus, it wasn't just a nightmare for the girl who was celebrating her birthday, but for the two contestants who had no idea that it would be their last service. As always, the quinceanera's menu had the winning dishes from the previous challenge, and right off the bat, the blue team was on fire. The team rapidly sent out their appetizers at a fantastic pace, all thanks to John Scallion and Anthony Rodriguez's awesome teamwork. Ceviche, two ravioli and a Caesar first. However, in the red team, Amanda Giblin ran into some tuna trouble, which left the red team frustrated. When Amanda finally sent her tuna to the pass, they were broken, and this left Ramsey in dismay. Thankfully, her refire was accepted, but at this point, the red team was already behind with their orders. The blue team, on the other hand, continued to pump out appetizers for the head table. Why is all this tuna broken? Look. Oh, God. If this continued, the red team would surely lose. So before things got worse, Nedra Harris decided to help Amanda at her station. But did Amanda accept her help? No, she swiftly declined it. You need something, Amanda? Nope. Nedra, however, continued to work without Amanda's knowledge because she knew that Amanda would be doomed. Man, I'm going right over there right now to help her out. But nobody could predict the disaster that was about to come. When the tuna was sent to the pass, this is how it turned out to be. Just touch that, touch that with your fingers. Stone cold. Stone, it's ice cold! What followed was a blame game where Amanda shamelessly blamed Nedra and Nedra was left visibly shocked. She only tried to help, remember? Back in the blue team, John and Anthony finished their part of the appetizers thanks to their strong teamwork. That's it on ass. That's it on ass. Oh, no, no, no. At the very same time, the red team had a huge backlog of orders. The delay was starting to frustrate the hungry diners who were getting impatient with the long wait times. The event planner really seemed to want to get the waltz started as well. Don't, don't let us down, please, yeah? We need to start the waltz here tonight. Technically, the waltz is usually started after all the appetizers go out, but Amanda and Nedra were making that impossible. Even Jean-Philippe's plea made no difference to any of them. Sometime later, when Nedra was walking with the refire to the pass, the most annoying thing happened. Here! Oh my god! This could have easily been avoided had they just communicated with each other. That's what every chef does in the kitchen to avoid bumping into each other. All they had to do was call out, but no, their ego didn't allow them to. Chef Ramsay was absolutely frustrated with the two, and poor Jean-Philippe couldn't hold back the waltz anymore. They just didn't start dancing, chef. Oh, f <laughs> These contestants were leaving no stone unturned to screw up this poor girl's memorable night. While Jean-Philippe got on with his job, Chef Ramsay wasn't having any of it. Hey, f off. Well, I agree that it was mainly Amanda and Nedra's fault. But the red team could have easily tried to bring the situation under control by working as a team. They did the complete opposite, so they totally deserve Chef Ramsay's outburst. The appetizer round was totally trashed, but would the entrees be any better? Sadly, the blue team started to lose their momentum, and the red team had no momentum anyway. Both teams had to start with the head table. In the blue team, Zach brought less portions of potatoes to the pass, which could be solved really easily. But when Barrett brought his linguine to the pass, it was a whole different story. Just taste it. Crunchy fucking linguine. No spinach. Despite that, the blue team served their side of the entrees to the head table. The red team's story wasn't any different, and this time, it was Nedra's chicken. Look at that, touch how dry that is. Now that the head table had received their food, both teams were ahead with dishing out their orders for the remaining guests at a good pace. But that's when Zach sent out fewer portions of potatoes yet again. 
If that wasn't enough, he even started to show an attitude to Chef Ramsay. I told you get lots of potatoes on. I gave some already. Calm down. How the hell could the famous chef chill when everyone was doing nothing but frustrating him the entire night? While Zach was berated for his oversmartness, Chef Ramsay also lectured him for his poor attitude. That probably helped to make a difference since Zach did eventually walk with enough portions of potatoes. It was crazy to see Zach transform into this totally different and arrogant person so quickly. And that's not the kind of attitude you need to have in a place as heated as the kitchen. Anyway, when both teams were on their final ticket, the mistakes continued to pile up. Barrett's kebabs turned out to be rubbery, charred fucking stick in a piece of rubber bullet. And in the red team, Cindy's beef was still mooing. This ribeye still got his fucking horns on. But the good thing is, both the refires were accepted and the service came to an end. However, that doesn't mean Chef Ramsay was done. He had to share a piece of his mind with both teams, and it's safe to say that he was damn pissed. Yes, it was special, all right? Especially painful. While the blue team did have a good start, they didn't have a good finish. The entire event turned out to be a complete failure, and both the teams were equally responsible. Everybody knew that there wasn't going to be a winner for this service, but Chef Ramsay shocked everyone with a double elimination. Amanda, give me a jacket. The time is done in Hell's Kitchen. And then came another blow. Barrett, give me your jacket. This shows how pissed Chef Ramsay was with both teams. I honestly think that they should stop hosting special events because they rarely turn out to be successful anyway. Do you really remember any dinner services that actually ended on a good note? Don't forget to share your thoughts with me in the comments. Anyway, Chef Ramsay had to literally question his decision of choosing the final six for the Black Jacket Challenge in Season 8. That's truly how disastrous this service turned out to be. That's all I asked for! Yes, Chef! a bit of respect! In the 11th episode, though, the final six contestants were all set to prove their worth to Chef Ramsay. The famous chef was looking forward to an exciting night, but who would have thought that the service would take an unexpected turn? What happened is, just as the service began and the first order came in, Sabrina Brimhall and Gail Novonario screwed things up. That is cooked as fuck. There's no color! The funny thing is, when Trev McGrath saw them screwing up their first order, he was very confident about his spaghetti, but Chef Ramsay rejected that too. Pasta's overcooked and it's stewed! While the three got to work on the refire, Sabrina and Trev got into a screaming match with each other. Four minutes, that pasta's gonna cook in four minutes, Trev! There's pasta in the back! To be honest, anyone would have screamed at Sabrina because she was really irritating. She kept pestering Trev despite his several attempts to answer her. Well, I think Trev was more bothered about his spaghetti being rejected than Sabrina, to be honest. Well, this didn't sit well with sous chef Scott, who chewed Trev out anyway. Get your shit together and cook a pasta! Despite that, the refire was finally accepted and Chef Ramsay was able to send out the first order. However, the animosity between Trev and Sabrina didn't end there. Trev wasn't communicating well with Sabrina, and naturally, this was affecting the entire team. Seeing this ridiculous scene unfold, Chef Ramsay was furious. I need a team, less shouting, and how about a little bit more cooking? Why couldn't they put their differences aside and just argue at the dorms? The dysfunctional teamwork was affecting the entire team, and the orders kept piling up. It wouldn't be long until the customers started to leave. And so, Chef Ramsay had to do something about it before it was too late. Seeing the backlog, he had no other choice but to start with the entrees as well. But did that help? Not one bit. There was absolutely no momentum in both kitchens, and Chef Ramsay was infuriated. Plus, Gail's fish only made things worse. That's what I got to pass. When his brown is cut, when his black is fat. Every single thing was just a mess, a really hot mess. What's wrong with you? I'm trying to work, Chef. I'm trying yeah. to communicate. You may fart, but there's shit all coming out. An hour and 15 minutes into the service, no food was being sent out. So, Chef Ramsay took charge and ordered Nana Sively to fire the steak for Diane. Gail knew that there was no room to make mistakes since the entrees would have to go out at the same time as Nana's steaks. Thankfully, she was able to succeed and the entrees started to fly out of the kitchen. However, Sabrina had to destroy the momentum all over again thanks to her absent-mindedness. She's given up. The face tells a story. No, I haven't, Chef! Well, I thought that at least Jillian Flathers, Nana, and Russell Cook would give her their best. But when Jillian and Russell joined in on the mistakes too, I had no hope for the service. Are you wondering what they did? Well, check this out. That is salty as f They're undercooked. Get your eyes tested. Their mistake was an absolute train wreck. And it was one mistake after another, like some sort of chain reaction. 
Chef Ramsay had enough of them and sternly warned them for the last time. The warning did work, but not for so long. Let's all just shut it down. After Ramsay's stern orders, the contestants did send their entrees out at a rapid pace. But when Russell sent out a raw ribeye, the famous chef made sure to keep his promise. Fuck off! Get out! Yeah, that's right, get out! Wow, these contestants just got kicked out in the very first Black Jacket dinner service. That's absolutely terrible. While the entire service was disappointing, it did turn out to be good at the very end. And yeah, this was the service that sent Sabrina home, and thank god for that. It was getting really hard to tolerate her on the show, not just for the contestants, but also for the viewers. I would have gone insane if I had a person like that on my team. The problem with Sabrina was that she didn't mind throwing anyone under the bus for her own mistakes. And she didn't even have to think twice about it. In one of the discussions about Sabrina's backstabbing, one user wrote that Sabrina was just like Elise Harris. And honestly, I can't agree more. They were both so whiny. Both of these contestants easily threw their team under the bus, never took responsibility, always thought of themselves as the best, and never cared about being team players. But this next contestant was so bad that he was kicked out of the service not once, not twice, but three times. It was the first dinner service of the 11th season, and both teams were geared up to showcase their abilities. That night, tableside steam mussels were to be served by Amanda Giblin and Christian Rosati. What's more, actors Deborah Ann Wall and Owain Yeoman dined at Hell's Kitchen. As the red team received their first order, Gina Aloise annoyed Mary Ponelt with her silly questions. And when Gina finally started to cook the scallops, the team got worried. Gina flipped the scallops way too many times, and it looked like they weren't cooking very well. When she finally sent her scallops to the pass, the team was worried that Chef Ramsay would force them to restart. But this is what he said. Who cooked them? I did, Chef. Excellent. Thank you. Wow, that was something no one expected. Meanwhile, in the blue team, when Ramsay called out their first order, they hardly gave a response and this annoyed the famous chef. Then, Chef Ramsay had to ask them again, hoping to get a response from the team. Now, there was one contestant who wanted to stand out with his performance, and that was Sebastian Royo. Sebastian had never cooked Italian food before since he was a Mexican who loves spicy food. However, he wanted to impress Chef Ramsay by cooking the perfect risotto. But all he managed was an undercooked risotto, which left Chef Ramsay frustrated. Well, that was a failure. Anyway, as you know, Hell's Kitchen is all about collaboration. So while Sebastian's risotto was trashed, Zach Womack had cooked the scallops to perfection. And this further frustrated both Ramsay and Zach, since these delicious scallops were now wasted. In the red team, Gina wanted to prove to her teammates that she could impress Chef Ramsay with her scallops again. But this time, she ended up annoying them by messing up her timing. Despite asking Nedra Harris on several occasions for the time, Gina continued to look confused. Then, when Chef Ramsay asked for the time on the order, Gina continued to pester Nedra. Well, Nedra ignored her, but when Gina was about to walk up to the pass, Nedra still needed two more minutes. When the two finally delivered their dishes, the scallops were rejected for being overcooked and watery. First of all, Gina was a confused mess, but what she did next was even crazier. She confused Chef Ramsay. Somebody else got to do risotto. What do you mean? Gina didn't think twice before throwing Nedra under the bus, and Nedra obviously wasn't happy about it. I mean, who would be? After all the drama, when Gina sent her refire to the pass, it was rejected for being too rubbery, and this angered Ramsay. Can't even hold it together for the second ticket. Get out! In the blue team, Sebastian got his refire accepted, and Zach came up with another round of perfectly cooked scallops. This guy was killing it! The blue team then started with their second ticket. And when Sebastian brought his capellini to the pass, it was rejected for being too spicy and disgusting. So, once again, Zach's perfectly cooked scallops were wasted. After Chef Ramsay urged Sebastian to get it together, Michael Landon gave him a little pep talk. And in response, Sebastian called him Mikey Wikey, much to the surprise of his teammates. Later, when he tried to communicate with Zach on the timing, Zach didn't respond. So Sebastian went right back to poking fun at people, and this time, he called Zach Zacky Wacky. But there was one person who didn't appreciate this behavior in the kitchen, and that was Chef Ramsay. And once he heard Sebastian calling out names, all hell broke loose. Zacky Wacky. Sorry, so I apologize about that, Chef. Yeah, do me a favor. Get out! Despite being asked to leave, Sebastian tried to return to his station from behind the kitchen, but who was he trying to fool? Chef Ramsay then booted him out in the most iconic way. Second time, get out! Seeing the blue team in disarray, Christian decided to help his team out by serving mussels to the blue diners, even though some of them didn't order. And I have to say, that was a smart idea to buy some time and keep the diners happy. 
In the red team, Nedra and Mary managed to push out several orders of appetizers, and the team moved on to the entrees. But they soon stumbled when Danielle Bourne got completely lost and failed to remember the tickets. She then revealed to Susan Heaton that she had never worked in a brigade before. Danielle then grabbed the ticket, wondering if it was the one that Jeff Ramsey had read. But when Ramsey saw this happening, he schooled her. One, two, three, yes, yes. and it's that. You're making such hard work out of nothing. In the blue kitchen, John Scallion and Zach finally finished their appetizers and moved on to the entrees. When Michael sent his lamb to the pass, it came out raw, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. In the blue kitchen, Barrett Bear was ready to serve his Wellingtons. But Michael still needed some time on his lamb, which annoyed Barrett. Then, when they finally sent their meat to the pass, Chef Ramsay sent it right back. He believed that the lamb had more bone than meat and that the Wellingtons were overcooked. Ramsey was already frustrated, but as he talked to the blue team about it, guess who showed up? Sebastian! Oh no, he shouldn't have done that one. When Sebastian started to request that Chef Ramsey let him get back to his station, Ramsey lost it. You come back downstairs again, you'll be leaning through the front door. Now get out! And this time, Sebastian wasn't the only one to go. Jeff Ramsey asked him to take Michael and Barrett along with him and to not return to the service again. In the red kitchen, Chef Ramsey was annoyed seeing the black kale missing. And when Ramsey asked about it, neither Danielle nor Susan answered. Later, when they brought their garnishes to the pass, Susan's garnish came out rubbery, much to Chef Ramsey's dismay. So he decided to kick her out. After, when Chef Ramsey reminded Danielle about the ticket, she got confused since she didn't know if he wanted the refire along with the new order. Ramsey had had enough of her and kicked her out too. Or do you just need the two chicken and two Wellington? Get out! Back in the blue kitchen, Anthony was at the meat station and got his lamb accepted. But Jeremy Madden pissed Chef Ramsey off when he failed to repeat the next order even after Ramsey repeated it three times. It was now Jeremy's turn to leave the kitchen. One hour and a half into the service, Mary was assigned to the garnish station in addition to her station. Understandably, with two stations to manage, Mary was overwhelmed. One of the customers even received a dish without garnishes. It needs garnish. You're absolutely right. My apologies. Give me two minutes. Since she was struggling to get the garnishes done, Chef Ramsay urged someone to help her out. He then saw Jacqueline Boldessari doing nothing but hydrating herself, which made Ramsay furious. And obviously, she was the next one to leave the kitchen. Get out! Get out! Back in the blue kitchen, things hadn't got any better. When Dan sent his garnish up, it came out undercooked, and when John sent out his risotto, it was overcooked. Chef Ramsay was just about done with these guys. Take that on yourself and get the f*** out of there. The famous chef was already angry with the blue team because of their performance, but Ray Alonghi made him even more furious. At this point, I didn't even think that was possible. When Chef Ramsay asked Ray to taste the risotto, you won't believe what Ray did. He used his finger, and this made Chef Ramsay infuriated. And, well, I don't have to tell you what followed. Well, bye-bye, Ray. See you in the dorms. Later on, when Anthony brought his risotto to the pass, Chef Ramsay rejected not only the dish, but also his presence in the kitchen. This left Zach as the only remaining chef in the blue kitchen. But how much could one man do? On top of the pressure of handling almost all the stations, Zach started to feel unwell due to dehydration. Oh, oh my god. But he failed to give up. He soon got back to the kitchen and started working on the entrees. This man is a total beast. Christian was then called back to the kitchen. And along with sous chef James and sous chef Andy, they finally started serving the entrees. In the red kitchen, the team was back on track and was pushing out the entrees quickly. But Zach wasn't far behind since both teams finished their service together. Post dinner service, the red team was declared as the winner, but Chef Ramsay praised Zach for his commitment. You gave it your all. Yes, Chef. That's the kind of commitment I want to see. He deserved every bit of it. He was a one-man army indeed. While this service saw the most contestants being kicked out of the kitchen, this next service is the worst performance by the red team yet. It was the second day of dinner service for the All-Stars. That night, a fresh seafood appetizer was served tableside by Michelle Tribble and Giovanni Filippone. What's more, John Ram, Zach Ertz, Alyssa Nair, and Juki Johnston dined in. The blue team received their first order and it was from Alyssa and Juki's table. Jeff Ramsey really wanted the orders to go out without any problems or mistakes. But we all know that wasn't going to happen. Nick Peters Bond and Benjamin Knack were the first to finish and swiftly got their dishes accepted. With a great start, the blue team pumped out their appetizers. In the red kitchen, Dana Cohen and Elise Harris were pushing out their appetizers just as well and quickly moved on to the entrees. 
As Barbie Marshall and Manda Palomino were working on their entrees, Ashley Nichol pissed Chef Ramsay off. She's looking at a watch. No, I'm sorry, Chef. She's no. a little bit late for the date. <laughs> oh. 45 minutes into the service, the blue team was handling their entrees. As Chef Ramsay called out the orders, Josh Trevato didn't give a single response, making Ramsay irritated. When Josh gave an excuse for being focused on cooking his meat, Chef Ramsay sarcastically thanked him. Then, Van Hurt made Chef Ramsay impatient when he delayed sending out the salmon order. Despite the problems, they got their order accepted and the blue team continued to push out their entrees. In the red kitchen, as Barbie got ready with her meat, Manda wasn't ready with the garnishes. Seeing this, Chef Ramsay became frustrated and accused Manda of dragging the red team down. Then, Robin Almodovar pissed Chef Ramsay off by sending a raw salmon to the pass. Manda can't even get her head round two tables at the same time. Robin and Manda had already irritated Chef Ramsay enough, but Ashley added fuel to the fire by not paying any attention. Watch your nails, watch your nails. Oh my god. In the blue kitchen, everyone was ready with their dishes, but Josh was late with his, and that made Chef Ramsay really impatient. But the wait was surprisingly worth it, since his dish was accepted. The blue team continued to push out entrees at a great pace, and Ramsay loved the momentum. In the red kitchen, the red team was working on their refire. After Chef Ramsay asked for a time on the refires, Robin tried to communicate with Barbie, but Barbie rudely shut her down since she was talking to Ramsay. This attitude surprised everyone on the team. Seeing Barbie and Robin's tug of war, Chef Ramsay was dismayed. I haven't dropped my salmon yet. I need to know how long you can lamb. When the red team sent the refire to the pass, Chef Ramsay rejected every single one of them. And, well, I can't tell you how infuriated he really was. What does that mean? Last chance! In the meantime, the blue team was still working really hard. The red team got their third attempt accepted and got started with their next ticket. As Robin and Ashley brought their dishes up to the pass, Chef Ramsay surprised the red team by calling the blue team over. But he excluded Nick and Giovanni since they had already started on their desserts. And just then, Chef Ramsay found Ashley's overcooked lobster wellington and Robin's ice-cold halibut and was done with the red team. It was time to kick all of them out, and this is how the famous chef sent them packing. Get the f*** out! Chef Ramsay then deemed the red team's performance to be worse than the opening night and criticized them for failing to bounce back. But in this next service, while one contestant used his bare hands to try the food, another failed to use her head. What Chef Ramsay did next hardly ever happens on Hell's Kitchen. It was the third day of dinner service. As both teams received their orders, Chef Ramsay warned Keith Green to not slob the risottos. However, Keith showed a mini horror movie to the customers by first tasting the risotto with his spoon, then using the same spoon to plate the dish. And wait, 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 we're not done yet. He even grabbed the risotto rice with his bare hands. Seeing this, Chef Ramsay called him out. I mean, he had to, right? That's disgusting. Customers in front of you, get a nice spoon or a ladle. That wasn't the only thing he was called out for, though. He didn't even dress properly, and Chef Ramsay had to literally ask him to pull his pants up. Sure, it's a live kitchen, and diners love to see chefs working on their food, but not someone's butt crack. However, this wasn't the only thing that had gone awry, since sometime later, Garrett Tell was caught whistling. This wasn't the start Chef Ramsay was looking forward to. And the Red Kitchen only made it worse, since Heather West overused her leadership skills, and Chef Ramsay couldn't handle it anymore. Heather, do you understand that? Yes, it's her bloody call! 30 minutes into the service, both teams were finally pushing out their appetizers. But then, in the blue team, Giacomo Alfieri told sous chef Scott that his oven wasn't heating up very well. Upon examination, it was found that he didn't even turn it on. Giacomo, are you really that stupid? At first, sous chef Scott berated him, but then it was Chef Ramsay's turn. Why is the oven not on? Not sure, Chef. I'm sorry. You're not sure. You donkey! Now, I'm not sure what was up with this batch of contestants since Garrett angered Chef Ramsay by whistling again. In the red kitchen, Heather produced a very thin red wine for her fish dish, and seeing this, Chef Ramsay refused to serve it. Don't send anything, Heather, unless you know it's perfect. Because yes. you know damn well it's not going out there. There was no room for substandard food here. An hour and 10 minutes into the service, in the blue kitchen, Giacomo made Chef Ramsay annoyed with his duck. When Ramsay asked Giacomo if he had another duck resting, he lied and claimed that he had, but it wasn't there. Chef Ramsay knew very well that he was lying and chewed him out right then and there. Why are you lying to me? I'm sorry, Chef, I didn't mean to lie. You're f***ing useless, you know that. The famous chef then reassigned Giacomo to the fish, Keith to the meat, Garrett to the appetizers, and Tom to the garnishes. Two hours into the service, the blue team's diners were getting impatient with the wait. 
And in the red team, while they did serve half of their entrees, Maribel Miller was under great pressure. That night, the lamb wellington was the most popular dish on the menu. And with many orders coming in, Maribel declared that she only had six wellingtons left instead of eight, which was on order. Chef Ramsay was dismayed, and when he was about to talk, Sarah Horowitz talked over him. But we know that nobody should dare to cut Chef Ramsay off when he's talking. So this is what he did in response. She's just told me about a massive problem we got. You're mouthing off that we're good. Ramsay then asked Maribel to make some fresh wellingtons, but not before calling her utterly useless. The blue team finally got their two entree orders out. But Chef Ramsay was annoyed with Tom Pauly for whining all the time. A moment later, Jean-Philippe came back to the red kitchen to tell Chef Ramsay something shocking. A table was about to walk out because of the long wait times. Ramsay was frustrated with the red team and asked them about it. When Maribel decided that she needed 7 more minutes, the table agreed to stay, but reluctantly. However, when she sent her Wellingtons to the pass, they came out raw, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. Chef Ramsay was getting furious with the wait and the mistakes piling up with every minute that passed. And well, Maribel started to stumble and the table got really restless. Back in the blue kitchen, Tom ran out of mashed potatoes and this made Ramsay frustrated. When Tom looked confused after Chef Ramsay asked him a question, the famous chef lost it. What the f is this, Tom? I'm looking for it, chef. I Later, the red table that had been waiting for a very long time came to Ramsay to speak to him about their food. Maribel then declared that she needed 45 more seconds on her meat. However, when she brought her Wellingtons to the pass, they were undercooked. By the time she cooked the Wellingtons right, the table had already left. This was one of the most disastrous services ever, and Chef Ramsay was just left with one thing to do to shut both kitchens down. Switch everything off, yeah? So these were the times when chefs ruined dinner on Hell's Kitchen. I agree, most of these contestants were terrible in their own right, but who do you think was the worst? Was it Sebastian, who challenged Chef Ramsay by disobeying his command? Or was it Keith, who literally stood out like a sore thumb? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Now, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys.